Brett, are you live? This isn't on anymore. Come on, back up a little bit. Jody. Hey. I'm going to tell HR you're pushing and shoving. You gave me your consent earlier. Oh, okay. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 2019 Detroit Auto Show. My name is Jody. This is Craig Cole, and we're from AutoGuide.com. And uh, this is a really special Detroit Auto Show. It's the last time that the show will be in January. That's true. Yeah, so in 2020, which is next year, the show will actually be moved to June, which will be nice because it'll be warmer. It is every week of Detroit Auto Show. It's like the frickin' tundra. It's literally the coldest week of the entire year. And there's usually a blizzard and or something. And a Although, blizzard, and it's horrible. This year has been horrible. okay. Uh, anyway, if you're watching on Facebook, thank you so much for tuning in. Craig and I are keeping track of your questions, so if you have anything you want to know, or maybe you see something you want to you wanna check out, just let us know and we'll try to answer your questions. If you're watching this on YouTube, maybe leave your questions in the comments and we'll see if we can come back to them later. Yes. So, let me just, I'm queuing up the, uh, the feed here. There we go. I had a little trouble finding it online, but it looks like it is up now. So All right, cool. What you just said, questions, comments, post them up. We'll do our best to answer them. Yeah. But we're starting here at the Toyota booth. Yes, at and this is arguably, the most important car. I think, the most important thing to come out at this year's Detroit Auto Show, and it's the new Supra. So... This has been a long time coming. It has been 21 years since Toyota has had a Supra, and four years since we saw that uh, really dramatic FT1 concept yes, that kind that of foreshadowed this. That's too. correct. And when that car, when that concept debuted, everyone went nuts. People were so excited about it. Four years later, people seem to be a little <laughs> bit. I don't think that's oh, true. Sorry, yeah. I was so snoozing. people are angry about the Supra, and there's a lot of controversy surrounding it. Um, people are saying, oh, it's not a true Supra. How come it has so many BMW elements? Mm -hmm. Like, they ruined the Supra nameplate. Like, what's going on? People just love to carp about things. I That's think the so. Bottom like, line. They like to complain. Yeah, so no matter what Toyota did, I don't yeah. think they could have made everyone happy. But oh, here's, no. here's my point of view on the Supra. I'm just happy it's 2019 and we're getting new sports cars. Yes. And this looks like it's going to be a pretty good one. Obviously, very close partnership with BMW on yes. the development and production of this car. Uh, a lot of BMW parts, eight-speed transmission, three-liter turbocharged inline six, giving you the typical 335 horsepower you get in BMWs these days, it seems, which is probably a conservative figure. I wouldn't be surprised if you strapped this to some rollers that it put out a little yeah. bit more. So the BMW Z4, which shares the same engine, actually puts out a little bit more horsepower and a tiny bit more torque. Hmm. Um, and that kind of leads me to believe that there is room for tuning in oh, the Supra. Yeah. There's room for special editions. So I think uh, it's actually a good thing that they gave us, you know, a little bit scaled back version. Yeah. But it's automatic only, and I think that's what's gotten people's dander up People so are mad about oh, that. Man. But... So the eight-speed auto, Sammy Hadjassad drove it. He drove mm -hmm. a prototype model uh, in Spain last year, and he said the eight-speed is fantastic. It's as good as any other automatic out there. I'm sure. Um, I mean, today's people, modern automatics are so good. They're faster. They're more efficient. Yeah. They're, they're on paper better in every way than a manual. But they're, they're not, not as engaging, as and that's fine. Um, I was talking to Toyota people earlier, and they said they're still considering a manual transmission. Yeah, we'll if, see. If there's enough demand for it, mm -hmm. uh, if the market can justify making it, yeah. then they might bring it. So, yeah. you know, in a couple of years, it's something that we might see, we might not see. The main point here is that if you want one, you have to tell Toyota you want one. Like scream. Yeah, scream about wanting yes. a manual. Go out and buy more cars with manual transmissions. That sends a really strong signal um, that people are still interested in them. Yep. Uh, but uh, Supra, we got a weight, curb weight should be right around or maybe a little bit less than 3,400 pounds. Yep. About 50-50 weight distribution, which of course is perfect, what you're always looking for, especially in a sports car. Brembo brakes up front, goes on sale in July with July. a base price of about 50 grand. Yeah, so, so not too much money. What do you think of that pricing? It's an interesting price point. I yeah. mean, I kind of expected it to be more, to be tell you the truth. Did you expect the Supra but to be more of a like a Nissan GTR competitor or more a of little like bit a... not a full-on GTR competitor okay. I expected it to be closer to the GTR than it is okay um, so Sammy, which is why I would have thought a higher price right. tag so Sammy when he drove it he said that the Supra drove a lot like um, a front-engined Cayman 
Okay. Which That's I think a good is really thing. high praise, and very it's about the same size. Um, and so I thought that little bit of feedback was very, very interesting. Yeah. Because that means they've done, because they benchmark Porsches when building this. Everybody building this. does. <laughs> well, because they're, yeah. they're the best, yeah. right? So oh, it yeah. makes a lot of sense. Exactly. Um, so what else can we tell you about this? Wait, let me ask you this, Jody. What do you think of the design? It's very smooth, you know it's what? curvy, it's flowing, it's I, different, right? I know it's quite controversial. From the rear and the rear three quarters, I think it is fantastic. Mm -hmm. I love the silhouette. I love the aggression. It's like not, I don't think it's overdone mm -hmm. in the back. In the front, it starts to fall apart a little bit. Like, people it's really fine. aren't a fan but of that it's not, nose. <laughs> but it's not, neither is it this here. Is this a Camry or an Avalon? I don't even know. That's Let's a Camry. A yes, the TRD. That's a lot yeah. of grill. I'll take that so front end over that So, a lot of people end. weren't really sold Myself. on that n nose area. Um, but in general, I actually really like the design. I think it looks aggressive. Um, I see a, li a few hints of uh, Alfa Romeo 4C in mm -hmm. there. The silhouette is is classy. But you can yeah. tell just by looking at it. This this is a legit sports car. It sure and is. And that's what they were going for. But shall we head over to the Nissan booth now? Because uh, they've got a concept to talk want about. To mention. Oh, go ahead. Two more things. So yeah. one of the things is that right now there are no special edition models. They'll have a launch edition, which is the the first edition that they'll sell to mm -hmm. the market. Um, Jack Hollis of Toyota said that in about two years is when we can start to see kind of special edition models roll out. Once the sales start to go off, oh, special Maybe edition, a little bit, then you know they'll boost. come out with a different yeah. or like different colors or special edition limited stuff. Um, so that's something to look forward to. Okay. But if you have any questions about the Supra, let us know. We spent a lot of time you arguing about yeah. it, talking about it. So uh, there's a lot to cover. So if there's anything else we didn't get to, make sure to let us know. Yeah, so Nissan should be over that way. Oh, there we go. We passed it on the way in, so we'll wander over here because they have a another all-electric concept. I know this uh, is just the, the the common thing that happens at all auto shows yeah. these days. More and more EVs. That's yeah. the trend, obviously, and I don't disagree with it. But that's just like it's I mean, so it's, cliche almost. It's the way things are going, yeah. right? So I I understand the need for it. Um, this this is actually a concept car, not a yeah. production car. But um, yeah, again, if you've got questions or comments, post them up in the live feed here on Facebook, and we'll do our best to answer those. Also, I think it was Henry over in Hong Kong was saying hello. So hi, Henry. Hi, Henry. All right. All right. So here we are. This is uh, the Nissan IMS concept, and it's a concept for an all electric IBS concept. <laughs> Oh. Tell us how you really feel. No, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's not unattractive. <laughs> no, I think it actually looks yeah. pretty good. And uh, they actually build it as a lifted sedan, so it's not quite a crossover. They call it a lifted sedan. And you can tell um, it's got a, an interesting profile. I, I kind of like it. Yeah. So 483 horsepower, all electric. 590 Five. pound-feet of torque. That's what electric motors do. I they think it'll be fun. the torques. The torques. 115 kilowatt hour battery pack, theoretical driving range, again, this is a concept, Theolo theoretical range, 380 miles. Which is plenty. Yeah, absolutely. Of Gigantic course it's, wheels with carbon fiber trim. Yeah, and, and of course it's fully autonomous. But how do you get in? There's no door handle. But if what you happens? can, take a peek in the inside, because the interior is pretty cool. <laughs> um, it it's, has interesting, because it's fully autonomous, it has lights. You can't see them on now, but they'll tell you when the car is driving itself kind of to warn uh, pedestrians and other motorists. And it has uh, an active air suspension to make sure you, you stay comfy. That's important. Yeah, especially if you're not driving yourself, you kind of want to you can just sleep and snooze. Yeah, so let a, us know what you think about the design, the concept. I like the look of this. Look at the very sort of the crisp very strong yeah, lines on the car that you it's don't actually often see. Pretty like a pretty I don't want to say simple, but it's not overdone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think a lot of designs these days can yes. be overdone. They know, yeah. know when to put the pencil down. Exactly. Yeah. But this is this is classy. I yeah. quite like it. A nice look at the IMS concept. What's next on our list, Jody? Uh, we can head over to Lexus, which is back that okay. way. Kind of backtrack. There aren't any steps there. Oh. I think we got over here. Has anyone fallen off the stage yet? Not yet. Can I that, be the first? <laughs> <laughs> that always scares me at auto shows. <laughs> we always talk about like the uneven floors. Roman Micah <laughs> is commenting in the chat. Roman Micah of TFL. 
he's a buddy of Auto Guide. Oh, we love Roman yeah. and his crew. He stole Stephen Elmer from us. Stephen Elmer, oh, our trucks heart. guy. He's gone now. He's gone forever. Yeah. No, he was actually sitting like three seats down from us at the oh, whole, yeah. in the media room. We're still friends. Oh, yeah. Oh. But you're salty, Jody. I'm. <laughs> I love TFL guys. They're a bunch of really nice guys. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Russ so says, here... hi, Craig. Hi, Jody. Hi, well, hi Russ. Russ. I believe he's in Indianapolis. Oh, cool. Do they we do have, a race do there, we have, don't they? Do we have uh, viewers from around the world here? Oh, yeah. I saw Hong Kong was we here. We saw Hong Kong. Henry Yan, I believe, Cool. is in Hong All Kong. All right. Well, here is the Lexus <clears throat> LC convertible. Now, this is, it is a concept. This is a concept. It is a concept car. Uh, we're not sure right now if it's a hard top or a soft top. But uh, a lot of people are saying that the LC should have been a convertible from the from the get-go. Probably. I mean, yeah. they, I'm sure they engineered it to provide that drop-top capability yeah. right from the get-go. I, I mean, mean I'm you, sure, why would you not? I'm right? sure it's coming. Uh, like, as far as I can tell, this looks pretty uh, production ready. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Pow we don't really know much about powertrains, but I guess same. we're speculating. Yeah, yeah the it, hybrid V6. It would be exactly the same. So yeah. there's a hybrid V6, and there's also like an excellent V8 option. Oh, yeah. Who doesn't love a V8? I love V8s. And Lexus does naturally aspirated V8s now, which not too many people do. No. <laughs> Roman <laughs> says, FYI, we steal all our news from Auto Guide. Now I know he's lying. <laughs> all the views? They're stealing views or news or both? <laughs> news, he says. Okay. But I think both. Maybe Especially both. He came in, swooped in like a... Like an eagle with yeah. the talons out, snatched up Steve. I think we have to do a <laughs> TFL versus Auto Guide we video. Do. Wouldn't that be yeah, awesome? Yeah, we'll have a series of challenges. Oh, yeah. So, LC convertible, the same dramatic design, giant grill, smooth flanks you get on the coupe model, but with an open air yeah. top. And for a Grand Tour, that's absolutely perfect. That's, that's what, what people need. want. That's what you um, need. So, so what the, else? They had another car here. The other thing here. that Lexus came out with uh, at the Detroit Auto Show was this. And this is the RCF track package. And this is all new. <clears throat> um, so what this track package does is it essentially makes it more track ready, obviously. Mm -hmm. There's a whole bunch of carbon fiber bits on here. Uh, the naturally aspirated V8 is still on offer, but it gets a whole bunch of aerodynamic and suspension upgrades and lots and lots of carbon fiber. So I oh, imagine yeah. it's going to be very pricey, but pricing <laughs> has not been announced yet. <laughs> Carbon fiber makes Jody all... Because oh, carbon, carbon fiber prices. is expensive. <laughs> it's very expensive. And the other thing that's going to really drive up the price on this, it has carbon ceramic brakes. Oh, that's like a 10 grand option Which is so expensive. Because 10 grand yeah, goodbye if you exactly. want those. But if you track your car, you want they're them. the best thing yeah, ever. Yeah, it's better for heat. Because they, they can just hold up yeah. to endless punishment. Yeah. I remember we were driving the uh, Aston Martin Vantage in Spain, and they had us on a track. You were getting 150 miles an hour in the straight. And time after time after it took, they had us on for like 20 minute sessions of hot yeah. laps. And, and the brakes were fine. Until like the last minute. Yeah. Then they were like, oh, we're running out of stopping power here. Yeah. Pedal's but going a little soft. If you track your car, carbon yeah. ceramics are definitely really awesome. Henry um, wants to know yes. any spec info on the LC. I think we just, we covered it would be the same powertrain. Yeah. Much as the, so the this LC is a concept, um, but it would have pretty much, yeah, exactly the same specs as the current LC. Yeah. So that would be like what, 354 horsepower for the hybrid V6 and like 471-ish yeah, with the naturally like aspirated V8. Yeah, like. and so uh, the Lexus RCF Track Edition also has, um, where was I going with this? Carbon Besides fiber, giant carbon wing fiber. brakes that will stop for days. BBS wheels, <laughs> 19 inches. Yeah. So this is a rather interesting uh, Detroit show this year because yeah. we don't have Porsche, we oh, don't have control, Mazda, sorry. we don't have, oh. <laughs> sorry, yeah. I totally, it just came to me. It has launch control now, which it never used to have, uh, yeah. which will help you get that really fast zero to 60. Sorry. But I was saying Porsche, Mazda, Mercedes-Benz, Audi, BMW, where are they? They're all missing from this year's they show. The coupe. Yeah. They got tired of the cold, I guess. Maybe next year they'll come back in June. Yeah. Hopefully, I because mean, we have so much open space on the show floor this year, there's like, a whole section of like custom cars and in the like, back. There are suppliers that? that are here. GAC yeah. as a booth. GAC. Oh, the, the Chinese automaker. Yeah. 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 So. Um, but let's keep going. This away. Oh, let's go over to Genesis. 
there was something special that I wanted to show you at Genesis. And it is our G70 car of the year. Is that this one? So this is the G70 right here. And uh, when we drove it, we were really impressed by pretty much the whole package, driving dynamics, yep. features, luxury, it does oh, it all. Oh, the interior is beautiful. Great interior, great attention to detail. And it just feels like it's... Yeah. Oh yeah. So it's our car of the year, and I actually wanted to show you the fancy award that we gave it. Brett, do you want to come over here for a quick second? So Genesis has been racking up the awards this auto show, and this is the one that we handed over to them yesterday. Can we knock the others off the table? <laughs> Yeah, so congratulations to Genesis. Is not happy. She's, oh, no. <laughs> she's good. <laughs> Don't touch the awards. She didn't like my threat. <laughs> Just like, who needs car and driver? Just yeah, like. <laughs> who needs these people? <laughs> yeah, so uh, quickly wanted to show you that, uh, but we can move on now. Yeah, what's next on our list? Kia. Kia. Kia is over there. Kia is over where? Over, over there. there. Going through the Denso, crafting the core. Crafting the core. What are they showing here? Uh, I don't know, they're a supplier. Yeah. So things can they get off into of the weeds and stuff. when you cover supplier stuff because there's so much advanced technology, so many like sensors that companies build yeah. or other components. It can be difficult to sort of cover them sometimes. All right. Well, Bye. we're here at the Kia booth and uh, we wanted to show you the <clears throat> new Kia Telluride, which is Kia's uh, new eight seat three row crossover that competes with cars like uh, the Honda Pilot, the Volkswagen Atlas, the Subaru Ascent, and shares a platform with the Hyundai Palisade. And many mechanical components as well. Yes. They have a lot of similarities. But rugged style here, room for up to eight passengers, and I'm sure a very premium interior because he has been knocking it out of the park lately when it comes to cabin quality. And that does look pretty nice in there. It is pretty good. They have some pretty interesting trim pieces. I'm going to see if I can find one Lots for you. Lots of space you. in the back. I'm sure these seats tumble and this fold. One look, oh yeah, this one's Give not you open. Give access to the way back <laughs> if you want. But uh, 3.8 liter V6, 291 horse, 262 torque. Should be running on the Atkinson cycle if it's same as in the Hyundai Palisade. So it should be pretty efficient. Mm -hmm. I think they used to have a. Was it a 3.3 V6 in like the Santa Fe XL? Lo yeah, but not yeah. anymore. Because they, what they're doing there, they upsize the engine to 3.8 liters because when you run it on the Atkinson cycle, which burns, it runs more efficiently, more efficient. but you lose power. Right. So they went to a slightly larger displacement because it gives you the torque back. So very nice. And it should be able to tow up to 5,000 pounds, eight speed auto. Four trim levels, no pricing yet, goes on sale later this year. Yep. What do you think of the styling? Do you like the kind of boxiness? I almost this fell off this. Be careful, Jody. <laughs> I'm, not take, I'm not hauling you over to the first aid booth. This is very like Land Rover or Explorer, sort of. Yeah. But I kind of like the boxy styling. Oh, it looks nice, yeah. yeah. And it Absolutely. looks pretty good. John Any questions? T. Weixnar says a 2011 Volvo just called and wants its taillights back. Harsh. I can see a little bit of inspiration Harsh. there, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, well, let's keep Jose going. Evangelista says, hello. Who? Oh, hello, Jose. Oh, hi. I'm sure I'm pronouncing his name wrong. But... Hi, Jose. Um, Infinity Concept. Yeah, let's go over there. Watch the steps. Yes. Auto shows are all about remaining upright because it's very easy to trip. <laughs> I've done it so many times, too, but never on camera, which is what really scares There's me. There's a first time for everything, Jed. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> so we're headed over to the Infinity booth right now. Do they right have now. an ice cream display again or is that somewhere else? Or I think it was here and then people thought we were budding the, the, the and then they're scowling us the at us. Guy. Yeah. Oh man, he's like, don't you be stealing my Sunday, Buster Brown. Yeah, so here at the Infinity booth we have the QX Inspiration. Uh, and this is I'm yet, sorry. I know, this is yet another, oh. you know, all electric yeah. crossover concept and we're seeing a lot of these now because that's just where everyone's going so i believe that there's not even any specs or anything yeah, unveiled about this because it's purely in the concept stage but it does show you that uh, infinity intends to make an electric crossover in the near future with like every automaker i guess yeah and of course this one is autonomous <gasps> what other buzz buzzwords are applicable dynamic <gasps> 
It's emotional. Sustainable. Is it sustainable? Mobility. Mobility. Solutions. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just. How bear many with me. Buzzwords. M mobility always gets me. Synergy. Mobility is the worst. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, there's like a, an interesting light up badge there and a light up infinity. There's an interesting story about the unveiling, I think. Oh, that's true. <laughs> yeah. You want to tell that one? Uh, well, I guess they had some technical difficulties, I think it was. Yeah, so what happened was the car was like waiting backstage and then they were like, here is the new Infinity QX Inspiration. And then, and then it just didn't show up. Like it wouldn't start and it was stuck behind the curtain. <laughs> do, <laughs> so do, it was do. very embarrassing for them. And it, I mean, that's the ugly truth about yeah. things. Sometimes stuff and you I mean, can test and you can you can practice, but yeah. sometimes stuff just doesn't work. And it's right? a concept car, so, right? So the fact that it even runs to begin with and wasn't just like a shell. Yes, that's somebody had to push. All right. yeah. yeah. But in the end, they end up uh, pushing it out of, on stage. Mm. But uh, shall we go to Volkswagen? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Let's because go. Because they have a brand newish. Car well, showing. it's uh, perhaps one of the snoozier reveals of the show. Yeah. I mean, it was already a pretty quiet show. Yes. So, again, if you're just joining us now, get your questions and comments in the Facebook Live. We're doing our best to keep track of those as we're walking here. And uh, we'll try to answer your questions as we can. We're going to hit up Cadillac a little bit later. Ram's got some big news coming mm -hmm. up. Um, lots of great stuff going on here at the 2019 Detroit Auto Show, but Passat. Yes, that's where we're so heading let's right go this try second. to find it. I think there's some on the podium yeah, there. we should have a number of them. So here we have the new-ish Passat. Um, essentially, it is a refresh model, so everything under the skin is pretty much the same. Uh, powertrain, suspension, all that kind of stuff hasn't changed. They've done a few tweaks. They've got I think the same horsepower, a little more torque, up to like 207 Like a little pounds. tiny yeah, bit, yeah. Basically a different version of the 2 liter yeah, turbo they use uh, in everything. They've refreshed the looks a little bit, so it's like a little bit sharper all around. Updated design language. Uh, it's, it's still powered by the 2 liter turbo 4 that's in like all the Volkswagen products. It's a great little engine. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it looks pretty good, but I guess people are kind of, or other automakers are starting to step away from sedans. So this refresh kind of brings it a little bit more in line with its other competition. I would say so. Um, it's not the most exciting car to look at, but I think this is one of those <laughs> handsome designs that will age very well because it's true. you look at a Camry today, it, there's a lot going on. It's visually more exciting, but is that car going to be attractive in 20 years? It's going to look so old. Yeah. yeah. Whereas something like this, It'll look great for Tons much of longer than that. room, giant trunk. There are a lot of reasons to buy one of these, truth be told. Yeah. And uh, good warranty cards. I love these little, this, these crisp lines they do on Volkswagens. It gives you this little like shadow underneath, which sort of, they have a name for that. I don't remember what it is. Probably like dynamic fascination, fascination line. line. <laughs> <laughs> um, What's so the let's... horsepower of the Volkswagen Passat asks humble Waruka. That would be 174 be, horsepower. And 207 torque. Yeah. More torque, same power as the outgoing model. Any there other questions go. being asked here? Uh, yes, I've been missing a couple because I didn't have it in the right viewing mode okay. here. Let's see. Is this the last NAIAS on a January slot? Yes, yes it's it moving is. to June starting next year. So it's going to be like 18 months before we have a Detroit Auto Show. Yeah, which it's is kind of strange. Weird, right? uh, people are really excited for the show being in the summer. That means that people coming to the show can go outside and do test drives and stuff like that. They're going to make it more, give it more of a festival vibe. Yeah, I hope like so. Because you can be outside and not yeah. frostbite. Exactly, it's shivering. disgusting outside right now. Yeah. So I'm, I'm kind of excited to see what the show will be it like will be in June. It will be a nice June. change. And inevitably it's freezing, as we mentioned earlier. It's the coldest week of the year when the Detroit Auto Show yeah. goes on. This year as a final like middle finger to everybody, uh, there's a giant water main break in the city, so nobody could drink the water you have to in drink bottled Detroit. Water. So it's just like, really, yeah. come on. I, could, come I had on. to brush my teeth with bottled water yeah. last couple of days, it's but crazy. that's okay. So Russ Henry is asking, uh, between Detroit and Chicago, which show do we prefer? And that's obvious. 
I think it is Detroit. Uh, yeah. The Chicago show is very quiet. Um, Chicago is great to cover because it's, it's quiet. very open. Yeah. It's a huge convention center, McCormick Place. And there's Logistically, usually, it's easy. Yeah, and there's usually not too many people, so it's yeah. easier. Um, but Chicago focuses a lot more on trucks and SUVs, so you can expect to see some truck news yep. uh, at Chicago. But uh, they don't normally have sports cars and the stuff that you guys like the most. No. <laughs> Um, but we're at Cadillac now. We have some important things to look at here. Yes, the XT6, which they've got right here. Yep, there's this also one This should be the Sportline the model. They should have two. So there's a sport version and a premium luxury version. But um, this is their new front-wheel drive-based three-row crossover that's finally coming out. A little late to the party, but I think it's quite a handsome vehicle. A lot of people I've been hearing complaining about it. This thing's yeah, underwhelmed by people it. People think it's too late. They they think and it's uh, not enough effort from from them. It doesn't have super cruise. It doesn't have a turbo. It's lacking super cruise. No tur turbo V6. Yeah. And it just seems like a missed opportunity because the I mean cruise you is look great. at it. It's amazing. It's like the groundbreaking. It's 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 just an incredible piece of tech. And Cadillac owns it right now. Yeah. Nobody else has anything like it. So why wouldn't they just? Shotgun approach, put it on every vehicle in their lineup, well, charge it, have a nice upcharge for it. Especially something like this, where it's a more, they're trying to go up market with mm -hmm. this, right? And so right so. now, you can only get Super Cruise in the CT6, and who's buying the CT6? Not many folks right? at 90 grand, And right? I think that if they put um, Super Cruise in a big SUV like this, maybe <clears> that would be a big selling feature for yeah. them, so. So what it's got right now, 3.6 liter naturally aspirated V6 behind this V-inspired mesh grill here. Again, this is the sport model, gets you that grill, different fascias, clear tail lamp lenses, and black trim surrounds uh, around the daylight opening on the sides of the vehicle. But uh, 310 estimated horses, 271 torque, bolted to a nine-speed automatic transmission. Um, all-wheel drive, of course, is available. In the sport model, you can get all-wheel drive with a torque, sort of a active yaw control, something they call it. Is it, is it like an active differential out? Probably. Probably, I, yeah. I, they, okay. The press materials weren't particularly specific on okay. that. But um, yeah, so available 14-speaker people... sound system. But again, no Super Cruise, no turbo engine, no hope? I don't know. No, we'll see. I wouldn't say that. I mean, like, I like the way it's designed. I think it looks pretty good. I do, too. Um, people were complaining about that as well. But I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. It's handsome. It's elegant. I, I kind of like it. It, it kind of is inspired by the Escala concept mm -hmm. we saw a little while ago, which was also a very handsome concept. Um, I like the, you know. I think people just expect more drama, especially considering how long that we had to wait for this to come out. Because yeah. they're kind of behind the ball. I, I guess because uh, people are looking at products from Lincoln now, and yeah. Lincoln is just killing it. They're That's doing what so I was, many cool We should things. wander over by the Aviator yeah. just to see if. Oh, we got a question from Larry Hickson. He wants to know what is Super Cruise? Oh, what is That's Super Cruise? That's a very Cruise? good question. That's a so great question. It's Cadillac sort of semi autonomous driving technology, and it works. Oh, it's amazing. It's one of the most transformative bits of yeah. driver assistance tech I've ever experienced. And it's a little bit, it's very different from anything else ever yeah. offered on the market right now because Cadillac has gone out and mapped every single mile mm -hmm. and kilometer of major interstates and highways yep. in Canada and the U.S. Exactly. And so the car, so with GPS and satellites, yep. they know exactly where you are. What down within, to Because the GPS is super accurate, down to which lane you're in, yeah, basically. exactly. And so they've got super accurate GPS, they've got the normal range of sensors you would expect in a vehicle for lane centering and everything, and then they throw into the mix a driver monitor, so they, they know if you're looking away or looking yeah. down at your phone. So when they know you're looking ahead and you can intervene, Super Cruise can be enabled, and it basically drives itself. The car will steer, it will stop, yep. it will and cruise, it'll just speed. you don't need to put your hands on the steering wheel. No, you can wheel. sit there with your arms crossed. Where every other uh, yeah. adaptive cruise control or autonomous driving, you need to have your hands on the wheel. So this is very unique, and that's why we're shocked that it's not offered in more cars. Yeah, it's like, it's it's transformative. Yeah. It should be in everything they offer. Because it's As so good. As a nice option, yeah. Because yeah. I was blown away. I expected it to work all right. In some instances, it works like 95% of the time. If you go through a construction zone or something, then maybe you might have to intervene. Yeah, it gets but that's about up it. a little, but that makes sense. Amazing. Yeah. But um, we've got a question, have we gone by Jeep yet? And no, we have not, not been yet. over there. And another question about Suburban or Tahoes, any news on there? I don't think so. No. No, we're still waiting so on those. Old. Yeah. But uh, why don't we wander by Lincoln? Sure. I want to ask you guys in the audience, we've got the X-T6 here. 
which competes with the BMW X5, Audi Q7, and the upcoming Lincoln Aviator, which we did show you a couple months back at the LA Auto LA. Show. And I really so like the Aviator. Everybody's going crazy oh. because it's rear drive based. It looks Turbo great. V6. And oh. it's coming with that, uh, was it the hybrid powertrain? Yes, 600 pound feet of torque. But first, here's their, if you care, the stretched suicide door Continental is here. Cool. Which I just gotta, we'll bring you past this right quick. Yeah, so everyone was saying that the Subaru, or sorry, Subaru, yeah. <laughs> that the Continental should have gotten um, the yeah. coach doors from the very, very this beginning. should have been there from day one. Yeah. But they're kind of doing it as a special edition. Yeah. I think it's limited to like 80 yeah. units. It's kind of neat. I think um, the B pillar is a bit of a. Well, you need it. It would never meet safety without that. Unless you're Rolls think. Royce. Have they done without it? Yeah. I guess on the, <laughs> the Dawn, right? Yeah. Of course, it weighs like 9,000 pounds. It's, yes. It's literally just made of cast yeah. iron. Yeah. So that's the new Continental with the suicide doors right. or the coach doors, if you prefer that. I prefer suicide doors because it's more violent. <laughs> but Craig Cole is all about the violence. Yes. But here's um, the aviator here's turning the around aviator. right here. So we were just asking you about the, the XT6 or this. So which one would you rather have, guys? Um, like, I really want to know. Because I like the, the, the idea of the aviator. It's got proportions that are dramatic. It's got the rear drive platform. The interior is gorgeous as well. The interior is going to be gorgeous. But I don't love the grill. I think the Cadillac has a nicer um, face I mean, I it. think this looks like a little navigator, which a lot of people like. And just judging by people's initial reactions, you know, uh, when the Aviator debuted, people were going nuts. They thought it they, was great. Oh, they were really beautiful. excited about it. But yeah. when the XT6 debuted, people were just like, meh, it was it's just a whatever. Yeah. So I think people are just generally more excited about the Aviator. Yeah. But I think it's going to be a huge success. I call the Navigator sort of their transformative product that's available today, you know. And I think this is going to sort of continue that trend. Yeah. They've been asleep for so long, right? And they're finally kind of like... figured out their place in the market. Smooth, quiet, comfortable. And Relaxed. very luxurious. Yes. Yeah. And I, and I still think that Cadillac might be a little bit lost. They might be figuring that out still. They're still chasing the Germans. Yeah. Which they did a great job of. You drive they a CTSV, did. you're like, damn, that's a good it's car. It's a great car. But they aren't selling any. Yeah. And everybody wants a crossover now. So, you know, American luxury, uh, it's, it's a really interesting place to be right now. So Jose says he would rather have the Aviator. Rick says Aviator. Yeah. Yeah. That's We're, the general mood I get, Yeah, too. that's the same with the press. Everybody, almost to a person, is saying, I'm kind of defending the CT6. I don't think it's that bad, but... Everybody I've talked to likes the Aviator right. more, which I, is bad news for Caddy. It is, it is bad news for Caddy, especially because Cadillac is dealing with a lot of uh, controversy right now surrounding, you know, moving their offices away from New York. Uh -huh. We're going to go to Subaru. Yeah. Um, you know, dropping a lot of their sedans. Yeah, yeah. But um, Rick says XT6 is generic looking. I can agree with that. I mean, I mean, there's not much you can do with a, an SUV design to make it stand out, but I think true. the Aviator kind of tried to do something different at least. Because the roof line is kind of swept back and yeah. drops down a People little bit. People were saying that the Aviator looks like a legitimate, you know, Range Rover competitor, yeah. which is high praise, I think. Absolutely. So we're just headed over to the Subaru booth right now. Should we swing by Mahindra and say hello to the Roxor? <laughs> sure, people Off love the road. Mahindra it's Roxor. A, it's an awesome little vehicle. Yeah, so if you guys don't know anything about Mahindra, it is, uh, I believe, an Indian company who makes this off-roader, and it's not street legal. No, it's off-road only. Yeah. But and uh, like people a, thought that they took a little bit too much inspiration from Jeeps. <laughs> well, I, I believe the story is it's some something like a license-built older Jeep model. I don't know exactly, but you get a diesel engine like a five-speed leaf springs at each end, yeah. each corner. And uh, you go out in the mud and have some fun in a vehicle that's rugged and probably pretty affordable because modern Jeeps are... Pretty expensive, ah, yeah. So if you had some extra money to just blow on like an off-roader, these might make a really good option. <laughs> yeah. I don't know too much about Especially it. Especially covered in like the bed liner yeah. <laughs> material. Steve Elmer is a big fan of the Mahindra well, Rockstar. Right? Yeah, Trugs. We have a question. Psych Ferduas is asking, is Super Cruise better than Tesla Autopilot? I have not driven Autopilot I myself. haven't used Autopilot, but Autopilot doesn't use like GPS mapping. Yes, because Super Cruise only works on yeah. divided, limited access highways. Yeah, so, so you can't just go up your driveway and enable 
Yeah, and from Super what cruise. I've heard, uh, Tesla's autopilot is great. Yeah. Uh, and it really helps alleviate the stress from driving on the highway. I've never used it, so I can't say. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, Subaru, that's where we're heading. Okay. Little so this is, sidebar at Mahindra. So this was an actual, a really interesting debut for Detroit. This is a special edition WRX STI, and it's called the S209. And for the first time ever, the U.S., not even North America, this car will only be available in the U.S. Wow. And it's the first time an S-Line model has made it over here. So, so far, they've only been available in Japan. So I wasn't sure how Subaru was able to swing bring this over, but it's kind of the STI that people have been asking for. It mm -hmm. has more power than the base STI. So it, it, it has, uh, what, 341. And the regular SDI has 310 horsepower, so that's a pretty big jump. Mm -hmm. But with turbos, you just kind of turn up the wick a little bit, and you get a bunch more yeah. giddy up. And so it's wider than an STI. I guess it's got some fender flares, yeah. different yeah. suspension and aerodynamic upgrades, 101 millimeter exhaust tips. While They're you're back huge. there, Brett, those are probably the yeah. size of a. It's Mr. Michael Harley from from KBB. The, yes. Say hello to Micah and company if they haven't gone home yet. I will. <laughs> See ya. Um, so there's only about 200 of these coming to the U.S. and they're I not that sure. Was so funny. It's Why? Be about 200. Because they're not if it's sure. It's limited edif edition. Limited. <laughs> it is uh, limited. Maybe 209. Well, maybe 220. So they're hand building these in Japan at STI factory. So they they take a little bit of time. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm over it. Why? You have this thing with Subaru where you're like, I just don't, I can't, they're just don't like, understand. I just, I okay, they're good, but I don't get the love affair with them, I guess. They're just, well, feel like a tractor to because me. Because you're like, not a Subaru nerd. True. This car is exclusively for Subaru nerds. And that's a great thing because Subaru nerds are diehard. They they love it has so much history. It's a great reminder that Subaru has a great history in rallying, mm -hmm. uh, hill climbs. Mm -hmm. And this is what they want. Mm -hmm. All yeah. 200 of them. Yes. I know you're not interested, but you will <laughs> like... Incredulous <Craig. laughs> I know. Yeah. But you will like the fact that it is only available with a six-speed manual. That I can get behind. Right? That's so that's a good agree, thing. That's where we agree, Jodes. That's a good thing. Yes. Um, and they're bringing back the gold wheels, which people are really excited about. That I can get behind yeah, as well. I think that's sort of a signature for Subaru, for, right? For this model, I believe the gold wheels are only available with the white paint. So if you wanted a blue, like a World Rally no, blue... I want blue. <laughs> that one doesn't come with the gold rim. Well, screw you, Subaru. I want the gold wheels and the blue paint. Um, ooh, something else that's interesting is that they have uh, like an intercooler water spray system. Oh, so it kind of mists. Yeah, but you can operate it using paddle shifters. Because it's manual only. So Which that is the cool, are right? Ready. Yes. Yeah. Now that's another feast. That's three things I like. Gold wheels, manual only, and we're working on it. spritzer. Yeah, you're, we're working now, on it. if it just it. didn't feel and sound like a combine, I would be happy. But like, what you care about is the performance, right? So like, this car is really heavily inspired by their Nurburgring. Um, they had a, a special edition Nurburgring model that held a record for like a very short amount okay. of time. And when it happens, they I don't even think they went public with it. Uh, only after the fact, when someone else got that record, they were like, oh, we had that for a little bit. That was us. Yeah. <laughs> Psych is asking again, and I, I apologize. I, I'm sure I butchered your name, but asking about a hatchback WRX. Any news on that? Probably not going to happen. Yeah. I think there are always rumors around that, and the latest one said that uh, Subaru might be working on another uh, hatchback, like a hot hatch. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't seen any indication of that yet. They've had concepts They've at be Tokyo. Doing it though, right? I mean, people have been asking for it mm -hmm. for a long, long time. Like, ever since uh, they stopped doing the STI as a hatch, people were upset about mm -hmm. it. So, you know, we don't know. All, all there is to go on right now is rumors. <laughs> I think they'll do it. I think they will. It, it makes a lot of sense for them to do it. All right. Um, Onward and upward. Shall yeah, we go through GAC? <laughs> uh, if you want to. GAC. I don't know what even to say. They had so a concept, this is didn't they? yeah. So this is uh, an automaker from China, and they this isn't the first time they were at this show, and they keep coming to the Detroit Auto Show because they're hoping that eventually they'll be sold here. 
Yeah, every year they keep saying they're going to sell them here yeah. this year, and um, never happens. I think it keeps getting delayed, especially because of you know that looming trade war with China yeah, and stuff. Yeah, lots it's of fun stuff. Must going be on. a little bit harder for them to get settled here. But I actually don't know too much about this brand. Neither do uh, I. So let's just do a quick walkthrough and keep by. going. So we're heading to Ford. Ford had two vehicles worth of note. To talk For the about. record, I so think it's probably. GAC and not GAC. Well, I prefer GAC. GAC hear, sounds hear, better. Because <laughs> I hear everybody saying GAC. <laughs> but GAC, I believe you are correct. Yeah, so uh, we have a whole bunch of supercars coming up to our left. We've, oh, and we've got the new GMC Sierra. Oh, that's a heavy duty model. That's not new yet, but the 1500 model, which did not win North American Truck of the Year. No, so and the it, Ram won. It lost by Quite a margin. You're on the jury, Jody. What yeah. were, what's your take it's on it? What we would call, it's what we would call a landslide. Yeah. The 1500 won by like almost unanimously. Yeah. Which I'm not surprised by. I mean, the Ram, I think, just brings a lot to the table right now. Like that mild hybrid system is so good. Yeah. Um, it That infotainment the screen is great. It's the interior that wins me over. The, the interior is, is so luxurious. Nice. It so doesn't nice. look like a work truck at all. Yeah. So we've got a question so got, here. Okay, go ahead. Um, any new Evos? <laughs> Evos from Mitsubishi? <laughs> they haven't sold the just... Evo here in a long, long time. Yeah, it's... I don't think there's going to be a new one either. That's I a, think just Mitsubishi. I d see, my response is just like, just like I, I don't even know what to say. I think they're going to bring back the Evo as a crossover that's electric. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. And people are going to be so mad curious, about it. Curious. I know. I know. Um, what else? Uh, Jose was asking about reveals. We've got uh, one, two, three more, I think, that we had planned. Yeah. But we might keep walking around a little bit more if you guys are still hanging with us. But Explorer, back by the blue... Why don't we blue, do that first? You oh. want to do the Mustang yeah, first? Yeah, let's Doesn't do matter. the Mustang it's the way. first. Yeah. It's more exciting. Sure. So the big news uh, Shelby, from Ford. GT500. Woo! Sports cars! Woo Which, um, yeah. Here it is, more than 700 horsepower. They won't tell us just yet. The car is slated to go on sale in the fall, so they are still working on massaging a little more power out of it, I'm sure. Um, Interestingly but, um, enough, it is not available with a manual anymore. No, it is a seven-speed DCT, which they've got a nice cutaway of right here. Automakers are always going for a little bit faster zero to yeah. 60, a little bit quicker lap time, and of course, modern automatics give you that compared yes, to a manual. Although people were super mad that the Supra didn't come with a manual, and yet everyone's okay that this doesn't. Yeah, uh, it's called hypocrisy. I think it's, well, I also <laughs> think it's 700 called horsepower. 700 horsepower. Yeah. We'll make a little, we'll make a couple concessions. <laughs> yeah. And this is, of course, I would say, response to the Hellcat. I'm sure you'd oh, agree. Oh, of course. Uh, you got a. There's a couple different performance packages available, including a carbon fiber pack, which yeah. gets you. These uh, wheels, which come from 20s, the Ford GT. I believe they're 20 inch wheels that you get. Yes, R20. Uh, exposed weave carbon fiber, which is just gorgeous. And those things weigh like nothing. So you light. You just pick them up. Yeah. You just pick them up with a finger. Which, yeah, of so course, uh, is great from a, a chassis standpoint because unsprung mass, that's mass that is not supported by the springs of a vehicle, basically. It's always in motion and the springs and, and chassis have to sort of fight that so yep. you, you want to keep that as low as you possibly can the more the and less unsprung weight the better exactly yeah. so here it is it's a, it's a mustang super mustang it's magna ride shocks uh at each flat corner. plane crank supercharged v no it's cross plane cross plane yes, okay what they do they start with the block of the gt350 so 5.2 liters in fact it's right here supercharged with a 2.65 liter eaton blower right on top, which they worked really hard to get as low and deep into the valley of the engine's V as possible, uh, so they keep the hood line low. Um, again, 700 plus horsepower. Uh, they made a few changes to the block. I think they added some extra ribbing to it, so it's a little bit more rigid. They also increased the length of the head studs, so they, the threads engage down deeper and help hold the four layer head gaskets and the heads down a little bit better. Mm -hmm because you've got a lot of cylinder pressure a with lot this going big on. blower on top. No torque figure yet, right? No, it's going to be in the yeah. 700s, I'm sure. Um, and but it will, they, they did say that you should get to 16, like mid three seconds. Mid three seconds. Which is crazy. Quarter mile less than 11. Yeah, that's nuts. That's insanely fast. Uh, what else is there? New oil sump, much greater capacity. They've got these little kickouts here. I don't know if you can see those, Brett, but that gives you a little more capacity. Aluminum oil pan as well, help dissipate some heat. 
and very similar exhaust header design that you get on the standard 5.0, which is a wonderful engine. The 5 liter is just so smooth and makes this like reedy intake sound. That's it's really nice. It's one of my favorite engines ever. And it was just uh, on Ward's top 10 engines yeah, again. In, in the Bullet Mustang, yep. I believe. But um, yeah, this is lovely. Also cast aluminum cam covers because a lot of heat coming off of here, the plastic they use on the other models, it's not quite as robust. Yeah. So Craig can talk about engines forever. I love engines. Whenever there's an engine cutout like this, Craig goes nuts. Yes. He's it's so a, excited. It's the inner workings. Yeah. You can't like see it when it's in the car, right? You see just I mean, a little bit is, of the yeah. top. So, um, oh, port fuel injection mm, instead of direct. Mm, you know why they did that? Tell me, Craig. Because when you have a high pressure pump for the direct system, it's more weight and it takes up more room under the hood. And they wanted to maximize the intercooler size and the size of the blower so that uh, they could keep the hood line low, so push everything down. So they went with port, port fuel injection instead of direct. Very interesting, very nerdy. Yes. I love that. Shall we talk about yeah, let's Ford's go other to major reveal? The new Explorer. Ooh. So we heard you guys like crossovers. <laughs> You're saying that with such sadness in your voice, Jody. I you mean, guys people like... keep buying them. So first of all, I want to know, what do you think about a high-performance crossover? Me? Because Ford came out with an ST version of their new Explorer. And some people are into it, and some people are not. Yeah. I get, I mean, it's plus business. You can add some parts that you've got in your, in your parts bin, right? A higher output engine, some bigger brakes, a few other components and make a vehicle you can charge a lot more money for, mm -hmm. that'll be faster and more fun to drive, the, admittedly. Yeah, the margins are really high But on make stuff more like money that. on it. Yeah. You don't have to sell a lot. And it's kind of good for the, the image, right? Yeah. So it sets out an all new vehicle. architecture. This is the rear drive architecture, Correct. right? Yep. Ford has not done like a new car architecture in, I don't even know how long. They've well, been using Volvo leftover parts when they bought them in the yeah, 90s. and, and they're that's just underpin. continuing most of their Thank cars God, anyway. Thank God, because I hate that architecture. <laughs> but this is called CD6, okay. um, rear drive, like you said, but it should support, obviously, all-wheel drive as well. Um, lots of high-strength steel and some aluminum components in there. Overall, the Explorer will have lost about 200 pounds compared to the one you can get today. And that's always a good thing to take as much mass out as of you course. can. Of course. A variety of different powertrains in the brand-new Explorer. Base engine is a 2.3 liter EcoBoost four cylinder, about 300 horses. You can step up from there to a three liter twin turbo six with something like 365 horses, 380 torque. That's the one you that's, want. That's pretty nice. Yeah. There's also the ST, which you mentioned about, mentioned yep. earlier. 400 horses and probably 415 torque mm -hmm. and top speed of 143 miles an hour for an Explorer. That's for an Explorer, pretty that's pretty fast. good. That is um, hauling. Some good news is that they also came in with a hybrid yes, at the Detroit Auto Show. New. So this is it right here. Um, they're saying it'll get 500 miles to a tank. Mm -hmm. And respectable uh, performance with a combined output of about 318 horses. Let's see if we can take a look at in the interior because oh, that oh, one's locked. it's not open, but you can kind of look the in The white here. one is open. Let's head back there. Oh, just sure. Because they've done a lot of work inside to make it much nicer. One of my biggest complaints about the current Explorer and the architecture it rides on, there's no front seat uh, in the front seats, there's no room for your feet. The footwells really? are really tight. Okay. But with the all new architecture, ground up design, they've been able to rectify those problems and give you a lot more interior room, something like nearly 90 cubic feet when you fold all the seats down. Mm -hmm. And actually a four by eight sheet of plywood will fit in between the wheel wells. It's still a little wow. bit too long. It'll stick out a few inches, but it will fit widthwise in the Explorer. Now, does this have a third row? Yes, absolutely. I have not been in the back yet. Um, but the first and second row are as comfortable as you would expect for a family hauler. Cool. And yeah, yeah tows so up to 5,600 pounds, lots of advanced technology here. Brett, maybe you can swing in there and get a shot of the dashboard now and see the work they've done to improve the quality. Yeah. Now, Jody, a lot of people have been commenting on the 10.1 inch display they have. It's a portrait display. Right. What do you, what do you, uh, what's your take on that? Um, it's uh, going to be more and more common going forward. I think Tesla was kind of the first. Tesla and Volvo were yeah. kind of the first people to do that. Uh, Ram just did it with their 1500. Yeah. Um, Toyota's even doing it now in their Prius. I haven't seen it actually, the 10.1. That is 
Nice. Yeah. Because you can also get like an eight inch unit. Yeah. It's much, it's more landscape oriented, which is what you would expect. But um, that looks kind of weird. I don't know. I think it'll take a little bit of getting used to. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't really spent too much time with a car that has Come that. On. Turn on. <laughs> no key detected, Craig. All right. So that's also really interesting is that this is uh, like a digital display yes. now. Yes. I yeah. think it's like 12.3 inches, which is yeah. a funny number because like every automaker that offers digital gauges, it's always like 12.3 inches. Why not just 12? It, well, is yeah. like one supplier company selling the same screen yeah, or something? It's like, probably Because it's the case. like Mercedes is 12.3. I think Audi's is 12.3. Others are 12.3. This is 12.3. So. I never thought about that, but you're probably I right. Something noticed yeah. is weird. But anyway, we've got uh, one more booth on our scheduled okay. list. Let's go. And it's right next door because I don't think everyone cares about Explorer that much. I mean, but, they sell a ton of them, so yeah. it, it might not be yeah, yeah. the most exciting car, but it is something that people buy a lot of. Oh, Russ is asking, does the new Explorer still have that annoying left foot area design on the driver's side? And the answer is no, they got rid of that. It was so bad. I hated it so much. But now there's actually room for your feet in the new Explorer. And that is reason enough to buy one, I think, because it drove me crazy. But uh, we're going next door to Ram. You love trucks, Jody. Trucks, trucks, you, trucks. You own a 3500 yourself. I actually you, would love to have a truck. I, w I really want to own a truck. Um, like a big truck or a mid-sized truck? I want like a short box truck, single cab, oh, yeah, with yeah. like a Hellcat engine in it. <laughs> I think it would be so much that fun. That would be fun. Yeah. But uh, we're going through a bit of FCA here or at Jeep. Yeah. Obviously Gladiator. We've we saw this debut back in LA, LA. and it, it looks probably cool. Probably the most interesting thing to come out of that show. Yep. So in case you wanted to take another look, here it is. I believe the bed is five feet long, made of steel, got yep. some tie downs, pretty There's neat. There's only one bed configuration available for this Correct. truck. Correct. So this is um, sort of their mid-size offering, right? Yeah, so it'll compete with stuff like the Colorado, the Tacoma. Yeah. But with all of the off-road capability, yes, you can Yes, because you get speed. solid axles front yeah. and rear, tons of suspension movement, Pentastar power, or a diesel. I believe they're offering the Eco Diesel as well. But we want HD, heavy, heavy duty, duty Ram 2500, 3500. That's the biggest news from FCA here. And this is right here, the heart and soul of these new Ram trucks. It is enormous. <laughs> this is a 6.7 liter Cummins turbo diesel. Now, three, essentially three different engines are offered in the Ram. There's a base 6.4 liter Hemi V8, burning gasoline, of course. That gives you 410 horsepower, 429 pound-feet of torque. And then they've got this, the 6.7 Cummins, which has been completely re-engineered from the ground up. But it's offered in two potencies. So the lesser of those two is 370 horsepower with 850. Jody, can you imagine? 850 torque. That's a torques. lot of torque. That is a lot of torque. But you need it for an HD truck. You do. And then it, that's, that's just like the standard strength. The high output version crosses a very important threshold. Well, not very important, but a, it's a, a significant. Right. Exactly. 1,000 pound-feet of torque, 400 horsepower. So Ram is really the first to offer that four-digit torque output in right. a heavy-duty truck. That'll look good in the it splashy looks good. advertisements. Yes, yeah. down a little bit on horsepower. I think like the Ford Power Stroke and the Duramax uh, GM still have more horsepower, but when you're towing, you want torque. And this Cummins is going to give it to you. And a lot of people are just Cummins fanatics. They love this engine. It's a great engine. Yeah, it runs yeah. forever, basically. I mean, like what the, uh, it can tow, what, 35, Thousand yes, pounds. Yes, yes. Properly equipped yeah. with the high output, thirty-five thousand pound trailer, almost eight thousand pounds of hauling capacity. Hard to quant sort of imagine those numbers, yeah. you know. But uh, they did a lot of rework here. The head has been redone. Exhaust valves are new. Rocker arms are new. But the biggest thing is the block. Instead of being cast of traditional gray iron, it's now made of CGI, which is compacted graphite iron, which is much more durable. And because it's more durable you can make the casting sort of thinner and take a lot of weight out of it. Mm. So they've managed to remove about 60 pounds from this power plant going with the CGI block and making some of the ancillary components out of aluminum instead of cast iron. 
Lots of numbers. That's a and lot of numbers. Yes. <laughs> you memorized all of that. That's incredible. Well, I was on, I got the embargoed stuff. Oh, right. You were on the background where they yeah, had, yeah. yeah. So they've got a number of Ram models. They're going on sale. Should be like this spring, I believe. So pretty soon. Um, they're offering with the 6.4 liter Hemi I mentioned a few moments ago. You can get that with the 8-speed torque flight automatic. It's like this power right, wagon you can, here. You can look inside this one. Yeah, there um, you go. Luckily, it has pretty much the exact same engine as the regular Ram 1500, which is great because the interior is amazing. Yes, it's fantastic. Yes. Same cabin as the, because that's really why that the Ram won, I think, truck of the year, There right? was more reasons than that, yeah. But one of the major is like that beautiful yeah. interior. It's, it, it is really special. Yeah. So 6.4 has the 8-speed. Um, if you go with the 6.7-liter Cummins turbo diesel, you get a 6-speed automatic transmission, but... There's a six speed with the low output and then there's an Eisen six speed for the optional high output version. No pricing info yet for the Ram. Oh, brand new frame and chassis, a couple other bits of news. The frame is now 98.5% high strength steel. So they're claiming it'll be the most rigid in its class. And they've got a display right over here. Um, so rigidity and strength are a good thing. Engineering work that they did here and in the powertrain elsewhere in the truck They've reduced the overall weight of these things for the popularly, you know, the popular volume model by like 143 pounds, something like that. So that's a step in the right direction. Um, 3500s do come with leaf springs, as you can see, traditional leaf springs, but you can also get airbags, air suspension, which is very good um, for comfort and for capability because you can do a number of things. You can sort of lower the back end down when you want to get into the bed mm -hmm. or hook a trailer up. And if you do have a heavy load, you can pump them up so the back so end doesn't, doesn't sag, sag too so much. A uh, lot of clever work there. The 2500s do come with coil springs now, just like the Ram 1500. So that's a welcome addition there that, again, improves comfort. More refinement. And improves refinement. Yeah. Now, the coil springs can also be had with airbags in the 2500, so you get those benefits as well cool. in both versions. Great. Do we yeah. have any more questions? Because that about wraps it up. Yeah. I think we, we looked at all the cars that we... Jose is asking if, if there are any plans for FCA to do a three-row Grand Cherokee. And um, nothing that I've seen. They're, they're going to come out with a... They're going to revive the Wagoneer nameplate. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm pretty sure that will be a three-row crossover mm -hmm. from Jeep. Um, but no official news. I no, think they might have mentioned it in their business plan meeting, in the five-year plan, right? I don't know if they named it. But I know they said something. they're coming out with a new three-row. Yeah. But, and from our guesses, it'll probably be the Wagoneer, the Grand it Wagoneer. It better be, because that's like uh, a classic now. Everybody loves those. I want wood paneling. Just, but fake wood paneling. Yes. <laughs> that's the best kind. Yes. <laughs> And that wraps up our live stream We're of the already? Detroit Auto Show. I think that's it. You don't want to go back and look at like the Buick, the Chevy Trax or something? Or? You know that the uh, Buick Cascada is still on sale? You, shall we go do a walk No. Oh. It is, I'm just really surprised it was here. <laughs> I, I was certain they discontinued it a long time ago, yeah, but yeah. apparently it's still here. <laughs> Who knows? But um, well, I guess we should wrap it up. Yes. Thank you all very much for watching. Check out autoguide.com for much more news from the 2019 Detroit Auto Show. Um, ben Sanders and I will be, he's the video producer, we'll be in Chicago coming up in a couple weeks. Yep. Look for our content there. We'll try to go live on Facebook. And uh, thank you for watching. Anything else to plug? Um, I think I that's think so. it. Just go to autoguide.com. You can follow us on, you know, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have Instagram, Facebook, all, all that, that good, good stuff. stuff. But thank you so much for tuning in, guys, and we'll see you next time. Bye.